good morning, and welcome to the Rutland Area Christian Schools production of Nine Lessons and Carols. And I'll get the couple housekeeping uh, announcements out of the way uh, to start with. We would actually ask you to indulge us this morning and please shut your cell phone all the way off and not just silence it. Um, unfortunately, with our modern technology, as soon as you walk in the building, your cell phones are searching for our internet source and it is sucking our internet so that we cannot broadcast. So we're attempting to broadcast this morning. So if you could actually, for the next 45 minutes to an hour, shut your phone right off, that will certainly help us. Um, if at any time you have children that may become restless, please feel free to uh, step into our lobby and re-enter at any time. There's no, uh, there's no restrictions on that if you need to step out. Um, we uh, again would like to welcome you this morning. The tradition of nine lessons and carols actually began over in England back in 1880. Um, it was grounded in um, the belief that not only should we sing the carols, but we should understand the meaning in the scripture behind them and the scripture for why we celebrate this season from the fall of man to the coming of our Savior and to redemption. And so this morning we celebrate and we uh, pull out a traditional celebration. Um, it's probably more commonly known for actually in 1918 during World War I, it was celebrated at King's College and it was continued on from there. But uh, the tradition here and being grounded in scripture is the main reason why we celebrate here at Rax. We want our celebration to not only be the true meaning of the season and to be a celebration of our Savior, but we also want to look ahead and look to the fulfillment of that promise on the cross and ultimately through the resurrection. So thank you for joining us and I would like to just open us with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray this morning that above all you would be glorified. We thank you for the ability to gather here in this season to remember your birth, but Lord, more than just remembering your birth, remembering the fact that you sacrificed yourself in every way to come as a babe to be born in a lowly stable, but Lord, that it didn't end there. Lord, that you ultimately went to the cross and sacrificed yourself for our sins. Lord, and that you conquered death. Lord, may we remember the whole picture today. May we remember the whole story today. And may we give thanks to you for our salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. And I now see some little carolers coming to share the first message.
Beloved in Christ at this Christmas tide, let it be in our care and delight to hear again the message of the angels, and to go even unto Bethlehem to see this thing which has come to pass, and the babe lying in a manger. Therefore, let us read and mark in Holy Scripture the tales of the loving purposes of God the Father from the first ever disobedience unto the glorious redemption brought to us by this holy child. But first, let us pray for the needs of the whole world. For peace on earth, goodwill among all his people, for unity and brotherhood within the church he came to build. Let us pray for the poor and the helpless, the cold and the hungry, the oppressed, the sick, and them that mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the little children, and all those who know not the Lord Jesus. These prayers and praises for God's marvelous grace let us offer up to the throne of heaven in the words which Christ himself hath taught us. Please join me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. But lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lesson 1. God announces in the Garden of Eden that the seed of the woman shall bruise the serpent's head. Genesis 3.13-15 And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? And the woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you more than all cattle, 
and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, between her seed and your seed. He shall bruise you on the head, and you shall bruise him on his heel. Lesson 2, God promises a faithful Abraham that in his seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Genesis 22, 17-18, I will greatly bless you, and I will greatly multiply your seeds as the stars of the heavens and the sand which is on the seashore. And your, and your seed shall possess the gates of their enemies. In your seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because you obeyed my voice.
Lesson 3, Isaiah 9, 2, and 6. Christ's birth and kingdom are foretold by Isaiah. The people that walk in darkness will see a great light. Those who live in a dark land, the light will shine on them. A child will be born to us, and a son will be given to us. And, he sh and the government will rest on his shoulders, and he shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Please join us for verse 2. Peace that Christ will bring is foreshown, Isaiah 11, 1 and 2. Then a shoot will spring from the stem of Jesse, and a branch from his roots will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and strength, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord.
Lesson 5, the angel Gabriel salutes the Virgin Mary. Luke 1, 30-33. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son. And, you, and he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And you shall call his name Jesus. And he will reign over the house of his Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Lesson 6, Luke tells the birth of Jesus. Luke 2, 4 through 7. And Joseph went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judah, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because it was the house and family of David. In order to register along with Mary, who was engaged to him as well as his child, while they were there, the days were completed for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for him in the inn. Lesson 7, the shepherds go to the manger. Luke 2, 8-14. In the same region there are some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the city of David there has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find the baby wrapped in claws and lying in a manger. 
And suddenly with the angel stood, stood a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. Lesson 8, the, the, the wise men are led by a star to Jesus. Matthew 2, 1 through 2. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw a star in the east and have come to worship him.
Lesson 9, John unfolds the great mystery of incarnation. John 1, verses 1 through 5 and 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and apart from Him, nothing came into being that has come into being. In Him was life, and the life became the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. And the Word became flesh, and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only begotten, from the Father, full of grace and truth. I would like to welcome uh, Pastor Aaron Hubble from Alliance Community Fellowship to share a brief word with us. Are there details of the Christmas story you wonder about? Maybe you wonder where the manger was. Maybe you wonder which field it was in, or maybe you wonder, as some commentators do, if it was actually sort of like a, a basement stable. Maybe you wonder who the owners of the inn or the house were, and you'd like to know what was their reasoning for not letting Mary and Joseph in. Maybe you'd like to know exactly where did those wise men come from. The east is a big area. Maybe you'd like to know how they got there. If there was anyone that had these answers, I think it would have been Mary. Moms remember all the details of birth. They remember who was there. They remember how they got there. They remember where they were. The interesting thing is at the end of John's gospel, we're told that Jesus on the cross, he tells John, look at Mary, take her in as your mom. As best we know, John most likely did that. And if there was any gospel writer that was going to give us the details of the birth story, all those details we wonder about, I think it most likely would have been John because he was the closest to Mary. He could have maybe filled in all those blanks that we wonder about. And maybe John knew the details. Maybe he didn't. But what we do know is that when God moved for him to write the gospel, he didn't write so much about what happened. He wrote about the why. He wrote about why Jesus came. In verse 10, it says this, that, while the world was made by him, by Jesus, the world did not know him. 
So John, right at the beginning of the gospel, wants to lay out the why Jesus came. He came because we did not know him. And God wants us to know him. He wants us to know who he is. Well, how do we come to know him? How do we come to know the one who created everything? Is it, is it by believing that he came? Is it by believing that he loves us, that he was born of a virgin, that, that he did miracles, that he died on the cross, and that three days he rose again? Do we know Jesus by believing all the that's about him? Shockingly, I don't think so. In my thinking, there's a difference between believing that Jesus loves and believing in Jesus' love. Believing in Jesus' love makes it personal. Believing in Jesus allows us to receive him as our Savior and Lord. In John chapter 1, verse 12, we can read this. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name. When we only believe that in respect to Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, we can keep the truth of God at a distance. I want to encourage you to believe in Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. When we believe in Jesus, we bring the truth of the gospel into our lives. The gospel is that God saves sinners through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is a statement to believe in, not only believe that. I, I want to encourage you, maybe, and I'm just reading my own mail here, but hear the difference between these statements, believing that Jesus died on the cross versus believing in Jesus' death on the cross. Does it make it sound much more personal to you, much more relevant to your life when we hear those words, believing in Jesus' death on the cross, that his death on the cross paid for my sins, that his death on the cross took the wrath that was due me? Here again, believing that Jesus forgives versus believing in Jesus' forgiveness. Believing in Jesus' forgiveness makes it real to me. It makes me realize that every sin I've committed, God has forgiven me in Jesus' name. Believing that Jesus rose from the dead or believing in Jesus' resurrection. You see, I think when we believe in Jesus' resurrection, we're believing that the new life, that the power of God that rose Jesus Christ from the dead can be given to us as well by Jesus Christ. Believing in his resurrection. It's the difference between knowing that truth and having that truth in us. The truth I want to remind us of this Christmas and encourage you this Christmas is bring Jesus in. When we believe in the truths of Scripture, they become real to us in a fresh way. Believe in His ability to change your heart. Believe in his ability to change this world. In his working in you. That's the good news of the gospel. That we get to believe in his ability to accomplish everything we need. The forgiveness, the life, the healing, and the hope that we need. Believe in in him. Don't keep him at that distance, but bring him in. This Christmas, bring Jesus in. Thank you.
We're going to enter into our uh, candlelight portion of our service this morning. Uh, hopefully you all received a candle as you came through the door. If you did not, uh, we can have some people run some around to you. Um, Pastor Birch is going to come forward and i um, really excited this year because our upper school choir uh, has resurrected handbells in the school again. So they're going to share with you, um, to start with, while we are lighting the candles, uh, they'll be playing through Silent Night at least once, uh, possibly twice. We'll see how long it takes to light. And then uh, once everybody's candle is lit, and lit we will begin uh, as a congregation to sing Silent Night, which the words are in your program if you'd like to join us. So. Please join us. The light shines in the darkness. May you believe in him this season. Let's close in a word of prayer. 
Father, we thank you for this time together. Lord, we thank you that you stooped down to this earth. Lord, that you came to save that which was yours. Lord, we pray that we would let the light shine in the darkness this season. And Lord, we pray that for all here and all out beyond that are going to be watching this, that they may believe in you this season. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Please uh, stick around and join us. We have some punch and some cookies in the back for refreshments. And we want to, again, thank you for coming and joining us for nine lessons and carols this season. God's blessings to you, and Merry Christmas.